Okay, welcome to our fifth video on making the Osmosis Solitaire game. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you change the color of the deck of cards, and we're going to take a look at how the cheat cards are shown when you right-click on the board. All right, so let's just do a quick reminder. This is what the board looks like. Um, you can click over here and change the color of the deck to red, and you can right-click on these kitty cards. Oops and show the cards that are underneath and when you let go of the right mouse button then the cards disappear okay so going over to our place cards then here is a procedure change color change color is bound above and init to option menu so there it is right there change color so that command is bound to the option menu when you click on it and then this command uses a string variable called self.packColor which will be set um, by that option menu and then when we make that change, change color is called and so the first thing we do is the deck itself has a change color method which we call and we call that with the color that's just been set. So remember that pack color is the Tekinter string variable um, that we set using the uh, menu just above. So we get the color of that and we pass that into deck that change color you know, to change the color of the deck. Um, okay, so that takes care of the deck that we have defined as a class, but that doesn't change anything on the GUI. So to change things on the GUI, the first thing we're going to do is delete the existing down card. And that down card is tagged as um, self.pack.downCard. So it's easy enough to delete that um, using a built-in canvas method, delete. And that's one of the reasons why we tag things on a canvas. It just makes it so much easier to deal with uh, deleting them and changing them. And then we check to see if there is actually uh, any cards to be put down here. So the nice thing about the delete method is that if there's nothing there, then no, no error is returned. It just doesn't do anything. So it's possible that the down card isn't there. And how is that possible? Well, if all the cards in the um, deck have been dealt out, then, well, there's nothing there. But when we go to place it, we do need to check that. Um, if all the cards have been dealt out, then we don't want to place a down card even if the person has changed the color at that point. So we check to make sure that there are still cards in the deck, and that's just the length of the deck. And if that's greater than zero, then we place a card. Um, we place the down card on the deck using the place card method that we've talked about previously. So it's that simple. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we place the cheat cards. And this is where we do the right clicking Okay, so up above, in New Game, there's something I need to point out up here. We've got two bindings to um, button three. One is a click on button three, and one is a button three release. So you can do this release on any of button one, two, or three. Button one will be the left, button three is the right, and if it exists, button two will be the middle. And so when button three is pressed, it will call self.cheat. And when button three is released, it will call self.remove cheat. All right, so going down here to cheat, first thing we do is check to find the position that was um, right clicked on. And if the position is not none, so if there, if there was no position, then there's no point in. Um, checking the other thing is the first thing we're going to do is try to figure out where uh, was checked so to do this if k row is in position if k if position happened to be none and you do this check you're going to get an error so that's the reason why i did this if position is not none business just to avoid throwing an er unnecessary error um, so we check to see if k row is in position so if this is the case then somebody right clicked on uh, the kitty row otherwise if they checked on the uh, right clicked on the stack if they right clicked anywhere else we don't care um, that's, there's no cheats there so we just ignore those options 
Okay, the first thing we do is delete the cheat message, which was put on the board up here uh, in the new game. So once somebody is right clicked, we figure that they know how to cheat and we don't need to display that message anymore. Uh, this Coco, this little command here, self.delete cheat message, actually could have gone above here. It doesn't need to be inside the two different Fs, but it is. And then basically we have to figure out how many cards we're going to show here. So for this one, if we're um, right clicking in one of the kitty rows, we've done this before. We have to figure out which row it is. So the row is the last character in the kitty row. So we pull that out, converting it to an integer. We've seen this trick before. We get the last character in position, convert it to an int, subtract one. That gives us the right row for the kitty. Um, and then how many cards do we place? Well, we place the number of cards that are in the kitty. So we look at the length of self.kitty. And then we give them a tag. We call them cheat plus um, a card number. So they go cheat card. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those correspond with... Where did those go? With these cheat centers up above. So the keys for the cheat centers are numbered 0 through 3. I don't know why I did that inconsistently with the other rows, but I did. So there we go. Okay, so we get a tag. Notice we have the same thing down here. A lot of this code is pretty similar. It's just um, some very minor differences. And then we're going to create an image of the card. So we need an X and Y position. So the X position we get from the cheat centers um, from that tag. So that's the key. And cheat centers are the tag. We get the X and we get the Y from the list. And then the image is comes from, in this case, um, it comes from the deck. So the deck, remember, is a dictionary. Eh, stop. There. The deck is a dictionary that you plug in um, an ordered pair. And to get the ordered pair, we look at the kitty list. In the kitty list, we go into the row that we found. So that puts us in the right row that's been right clicked. And then the card is coming from the for loop, so that's going to go up, you know, through the number of kitties cards in that kitty row. So this is going to give us um, an index into our kitty, which is a double list. The kitty list is, again, ordered pairs that came from the deck. If you remember that discussion from the previous video, we plug that into deck. The deck, again, is a dictionary, and then that dictionary gives us an image which we create as the image, the tag, we've already made the tag, and there we go. Um, and otherwise, if we've clicked on a stack, it's very similar. It's just the only thing that's different with a stack is the stack could potentially have 50 cards in it. Um, so we're going to get an index into the stack, although we're only going to go up to at most three cards. The stack could only have one or two cards in it, or it could have no cards in it. So we take the minimum of three or the length of the stack. Uh, and then we want an index into how long the stack is. So we take the length of the stack and we subtract off this length up here. And then we're going to do a for loop for card up to the up to length. So we're going to start at zero. And we're going to keep adding until we get back up to um, length of self.stack. Okay, uh, minus one, because card goes up to range length, so that will be um, length minus one right there. Oh, so for card at the most, does that make sense? So length of the stack minus length, and then card at most will be length minus one. So this index is going to go to the length of the stack minus whatever this is. And then it's going to add 0, then 1, then 2, and then possibly 3, but it'll never get back up to, to length. Okay. Um, the tag is the same as before. Cheat 0, 1, 2, or 3 at most. And then we create that image for the cheat centers. So figuring out this index business was a little bit tricky, but... That gives us a right index to the stack, and since we want the last three cards on the stack, not the first three. So I can't just do four card and range and then plug in um, card in here. 
because that would give us the first three cards in the um, stack. We want the last three. So that's what this index is, business is coming about. Okay, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's a good enough explanation or um, maybe you could do it with some numbers. So let's suppose that the stack has, let's say, 10 cards in it. Okay, so if this the stack has 10 cards in it, then this minimum is going to be 3. So we're going to deal out 3 cards from the st stack. We'll take the top 3. Then index is going to start off for card and range. So card is going to start off at 0. So the length of the stack is 10. We subtract off length. That gives us 7. Add 0. Then index is going to be 0. So we'll get the card at index 0 into the stack. Plug that into the deck to get the corresponding image and we have the tag. Then card goes to one, this goes index goes to eight, then card goes to two, this goes to nine, card goes to three, this goes to 10, which is perfect. Remember this had length 11, so 10 is the highest index in there, and that gives us the top three cards. So hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer what this index is doing. Um, and then well, it works nicely. So again, if you right click here, then position is going to be, oops, let's arrow up a little bit. If I right click right here, position will be K row one. So K row will be in position. We'll delete the cheat message. Well, I already did that because I've already right clicked on this. Um, so let's run that again. So the cheat message is up there. Right click here, we'll delete that message, and then we'll figure out what row we're in, and then we'll place the cards. Okay, then the last thing is when you let go of the right mouse button, you want to delete those. So how do you think you do that? Well, it's really simple because remember what I said up above. When you have a canvas and you want to delete something, if the, th if the thing that you're trying to delete is not there, no error messages. So what we're going to do is just we're going to delete all the possible um, cheat tags. And the cheat tags, again, go from cheat 0 up to cheat 3. So we just do for I and self dot cheat centers, which ranges from cheat 0 to cheat 3, and we delete I. And away they go. If there only happens to be two things there, it doesn't matter. The last two won't throw an error, so we're good. Okay, so that is it for the placement. So I think there's a couple of things to think about here. Um, one is you can not only bind a click, but you can bind a release. And so it might be worth investigating all the different kinds of bindings you can do with mouse actions and keyboard actions. We haven't even got into keyboard actions a lot. Um, but you can bind when a keyboard button is pressed, when it's released, entered, when there's an enter hit, um, different variations of control buttons. So you can control a lot in terms of what your GUI is doing using bindings. But the tricky part is it's up to you to control it. So every little action that you see occur in a GUI is something that you've got to create. And that's why the code for this stuff is so long because there's so many different options and things to think about. Um, okay, so we've got all those different bindings, and then a lot of this, again, is just using lists and dictionaries again and again and again and again. This is something we've been really stressing in this course, and this is why these lists and dictionaries are incredibly useful for keeping track of things. We want to keep track of cards in several different places. We've got the deck, we've got the stack, we've got the kitty, we've got the play group. Um, rows, all those things need to be taken care of, and the obvious way to do that is through dictionaries and lists. But the indexing can get difficult, especially when you got to do something like this. You got to go pull something out of a double list, take that. It turns out that is a um, an ordered pair. And then you have to plug that into a deck to get the corresponding image, and you got to keep all that stuff straight. Um, so just being very familiar with how dictionaries and lists work along with for loops on those things uh, as a very incredible and useful tool in programming. So hopefully um, I've made that emphasis through this series of videos. Now that's not to say that we're done because we now are finally going to start playing cards. So in the next video we are going to add some methodology to 
click card and deal three, which right now I just have a pass on them. Um, deal three is when you double click on a deck that will um, deal out three cards and click card is what's going to ultimately um, control everything when a card is clicked on. All right, so that will be the next video is filling these two in. Um, there's a lot of code in those two, so I put those off to the last and the code is, you know, it's, it takes a little bit of reading to get through that. There's lots of different things that need to happen there. All right, see you in the next one.